This is the JBL Boombox 2. It's the latest and largest party boost speaker in JBL's lineup and obviously it's the successor to the super popular JBL Boombox. Now, this speaker does have some differences on both the outside and inside from the original. But let's see how the new Boombox 2 stacks up to the original and let's see if it's even worth upgrading if you already have the original Boombox. Now, for starters, there's price. The original Boombox used to retail for $450 when it first came out. But then, its retail price got changed to $500 in mid-2019. But now, the original Boombox is typically on sale for $400 these days. Whereas, the new Boombox 2 currently retails for $500. So, if you want to pick either of these speakers up, they will be linked down below, and I highly suggest that you check them out because JBL speakers routinely like to go on sale. Now, first off, let's talk about the design of this speaker. The Boombox 2 looks very similar to the original. You've got your exposed passive radiators on either side. The majority of the speaker is covered in fabric, so it can stand up to constant wear and tear. You've got your control buttons up top, and you've got your built-in carrying handle. But there are some minor cosmetic changes to point out here. Most notably, the passive radiators on this speaker are way more stylized this time around. Cause yeah, even though the original boombox has the same exposed passive radiators, looks wise they look much simpler than the new boombox. Now, two other minor cosmetic changes to point out on the Boombox 2 is that there's a lot more gnarling underneath the carrying handle than the originals and the battery status indicator light is a lot more prominent. Which personally I'm not a fan of because it looks like it's just tacked on. But more importantly, the new Boombox 2 is a touch larger overall than the original Boombox. It's a little taller, and it's a little wider, and it's also a little heavier, weighing in at 13 pounds, versus the original boombox, which weighs in at 11 and a half pounds. Now, this one pound and a half difference isn't a huge deal, but it is something that I noticed the first time that I grabbed this speaker. But, just like before, the Boombox 2 is a good large speaker to take on the go with you. It's super durable thanks to its mostly fabric body, and just like before, it's still IPX7 waterproof. So, if the speaker gets any kind of water on it, it's gonna be perfectly fine. The only thing you gotta watch out for though, is just to make sure that you don't push these radiators in. Now, when it comes to tech specs, the Boombox 2 has been upgraded to Bluetooth 5.1, whereas the original Boombox uses Bluetooth 4.2. Now, ultimately, this isn't a big deal because both of these speakers can be connected to two devices at the same time, so you and a friend can both be DJ. And both of these speakers have stable Bluetooth connections, as they freaking should, because these are $400 and $500 speakers. But I did notice that the Boombox 2 still has a slight latency across the board whenever you try to watch movies or videos on your phone whether you're using an iPhone or an Android device. This latency is present whether you're using YouTube, Netflix, or Disney+. Now, this latency is easy enough to ignore, but it's still noticeable. And just like before, the Boombox 2 is still strictly only using SBC. There's no AAC or AppDeck support. Now, it would have been cool if the Boombox 2 would have been upgraded to higher quality audio codecs, but for me, what the big deal is here is that the Boombox 2 still has a slight latency whenever you watch videos with it. But thankfully, the Boombox 2 still has an audio jack. Now, I know this might sound a little weird or basic, but JBL has actually been getting rid of the audio jack on their latest speakers. They got rid of the audio jack on their Pulse 4, and they also got rid of it on the Flip 5. And personally, I really thought the Boombox 2 was going to follow suit. Now, just like before, the Boombox 2 also has a USB-A out port so that you can charge your own devices. But I do want to point out that the original Boombox actually has two USB-A out ports. Now, ultimately, this isn't a big deal, but I personally do wish that the Boombox 2 also had a USB-C port because a lot of phones are starting to come with USB-C cables these days. So I really think that if the Boombox 2 had a USB-C port, it would have been future-proofed a little better. Now, when it comes to battery life, the Boombox 2 has the same advertised battery life of 24 hours, just like the original Boombox. 
but those numbers are typically for when you're using these speakers at 50% volume. Will will use with this speaker set at 80% volume, which is what I typically use this speaker while I'm working out, because you know, during this whole quarantine thing, I gotta work out at home. I'm getting around seven hours of playback time out of this speaker, which is a little less than the original boombox, because the original boombox has always been good for around eight and a half hours of playback time for me. And this slightly reduced battery life performance at higher volumes is probably because the Boombox 2 is now a 30 watt speaker when it's playing off of its built in battery. Whereas if the original Boombox is a 20 watt speaker when it's playing off of its built in battery. Now, ultimately, the battery life on the Boombox 2 is decent and it can definitely last you a full day of high volume listening, which ultimately is what really matters. But now let's talk about actually listening to music with these speakers. Like I just mentioned, the new Boombox 2 is a 30 watt speaker when playing off of its built in battery, whereas the original Boombox is a 20 watt speaker. What this means is that on paper, the Boombox 2 is supposed to get a little louder and it has a little bit more bass than the original Boombox. But under the hood, these speakers still have the same setups. Both of these speakers still have dual 4 inch woofers, dual 20mm tweeters, which is about 0.8 inches, and like we discussed earlier, both of these speakers also have those signature dual passive radiators shooting out the sides. Now, for the sound test, we're going to be doing things a little differently. Since both of these speakers have the same sound signatures, so they sound identical, we're going to be comparing these speakers at maximum volume instead, because I feel that's what most people are interested in anyways. But something that I do have to point out is that the Boombox 2 no longer has an indoors mode and an outdoors mode like the original Boombox does, which personally, I don't know why JBL got rid of that. Because now you're only stuck with one EQ on the Boombox 2. But with all that being said, let's jump into the sound test. Took a swing at a wrecking ball and I prayed for my downfall and I found a way to reconcile Cause in my heart it's not worthwhile It's a bloody battlefield where some go down, others heal In the end it's all the same All you can do is play the game Oh, <laughs> 
So, like you may have just heard, JBL sound signature likes to put an emphasis on the mids and vocals, and the bass comes in when it has to. Now, from a performance standpoint, I feel that the new Boombox 2 just manages to slightly outperform the original Boombox. The Boombox 2 manages to get a touch louder, and it has a touch more physical bass. But honestly, I feel that if you weren't able to switch between these two speakers and listen to them back to back, you wouldn't even know there was a difference. Now, during the sound test, you may have seen and or heard that the original boombox sounded a little brighter when it was in outdoors mode. And that is to be expected because what outdoors mode does is that it slightly reduces the bass on the boombox and increases the mids and highs a little bit so that the boombox sounds louder and so that its sound can travel out a little farther. So, I kind of wish they didn't get rid of the outdoors mode on the boombox too, because it could have still come in handy. But also, keep in mind, if you want to get a little bit more out of this speaker, you can always use it while it's plugged in. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this is a 30 watt speaker when it's playing off of its built-in battery. But when you plug it in, it then increases to a 40 watt speaker. And when you have the speaker plugged in, you get a little bit more bass and a little more loudness out of it. And this is also the case with the original boombox, except it's a 30 watt speaker when it's plugged in. But interestingly enough, the original boombox continues to keep up with the boombox too, even when it's plugged in. Again, the difference between these two speakers at max volume is very marginal. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the Boombox 2 no longer has an indoors or an outdoors mode, and unfortunately, JBL's app doesn't allow you to directly change its EQ. And here's my problem with that. Like I mentioned earlier, the Boombox 2 puts an emphasis on mids and a little bit on the highs, which means vocals are very pronounced. But the problem with that is that if you use the speaker at higher volumes indoors, then the highs can get ear piercing at times. So personally, I avoid using the speaker past 85% volume when indoors. But also, the bass on both boomboxes doesn't increase linearly as you increase the volume. The bass on both of these speakers increases up until they hit 80% volume, and then from there on out, just the mids and highs get louder. So when used at high volumes, even though these speakers are blaring out a ton of mids and highs, since the physical bass isn't there to back it up, these speakers sound a little shallow in my opinion. But at lower volumes, especially anything below 80%, these speakers sound well-rounded and full because they have the bass to back it up. So overall, even though the Boombox 2 gets a little louder and it has a little more bass than the original Boombox, it's not a huge difference and it wouldn't constitute an upgrade in my opinion. But one major difference between the original Boombox and the Boombox 2 that might constitute an upgrade for some people is that the Boombox 2 is now a party boost speaker. Which means you can pair the Boombox 2 up to another Boombox 2 or you can pair it up to a Pulse 4 or a Flip 5 or all of the above because you can pair up to 100 party boost speakers together. Which, you know, definitely is overkill. Whereas the original boombox is a JBL Connect Plus speaker, which means you can pair the original boombox up to another original boombox or to an Extreme 2, Charge 4, Charge 3, a Flip 4, or a Pulse 3. But you cannot pair a JBL Connect Plus speaker to a Party Boost speaker. So, no, you can't pair an original boombox to a boombox 2. Now, I absolutely agree that this sucks and does look and feel like planned obsolescence. 
But I have found that Party Boost is more stable than JBL Connect Plus and you also get a lot more range in between speakers. So if you do plan on getting more JBL speakers in the future, then the smart investment today would be to go with the Party Boost speaker. And before anybody starts wondering, no, JBL won't be putting out a firmware update that would upgrade JBL Connect Plus speakers to Party Boost. It just ain't happening. But overall, even though, yeah, the JBL Boombox 2 is a decent speaker, from a performance standpoint, it doesn't constitute an upgrade from the original Boombox for me. Even though the Boombox 2 gets a little louder and has a little more bass than the original Boombox, it's marginal at best. And keep in mind, the Boombox 2 is getting slightly less battery life than the original Boombox at higher volumes. Even though 7 hours of playback time at 80% volume is decent, the original Boombox is good for 8.5 hours. So, if you already have the original Boombox, I wouldn't recommend that you upgrade, and you really don't have to worry about FOMO. And if you're looking for a deal, I would actually recommend that you get the original Boombox over the Boombox 2, especially if you can save yourself a good amount of money. But if you are planning on getting more JBL speakers in the future, then you are better off getting the JBL Boombox 2 because of Party Boost. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit that like button and get subscribed. It helps out more than you realize. If you want to pick any of the products up mentioned in this video, those will be linked in the description down below. And you can also support the channel by checking out the merch store. But other than that, I'll catch you next time.